Species Appropriate Human Rearing. So, what is that? And was, what does that have to do with Tantra and self-awareness? A good question, isn't it? And the answer is not so easy, but I think nevertheless very important. We all know the term species appropriate animal rearing and anyone who has ever really really took a deeper look into that knows that such a thing does not exist. The term species appropriate animal rearing is a so-called oxymoron that is a contradiction in itself. Sort of like small giant round cube or a silent cry. <laughs> what? Well, why is that now? There are obviously very many criteria that are important to ensure that animals feel at ease. Right? <laughs> yes, of course they are. However, the term species appropriate animal rearing includes an attribute that excludes the other one. For to rear an animal is never appropriate to the species. Wait, wait, I'm not hinting to eating meat is evil and all vegans are good. This is a decision that everyone must make for themselves. No, no, I want to elaborate something completely different. So once again, to rear an animal is never appropriate to the needs of any species, simply for the reason being that the deepest characteristic of each animal is its wilderness, well, the animal side. In some animals this is more pronounced, for example wolves. For others it is less visible, for example an earthworm. <laughs> well, but we do not know what goes on inside an earthworm when we look at him into when we lock him into a cube full of earth maybe he's just as freedom loving like a wolf but we are not able to perceive his silent screams for freedom who knows what does that have to do with humans and what does this have to do with tantra and self awareness well obviously everything Imagine the following picture. A wolf comes to you and complains that he is suffering. He describes that he is somehow unfulfilled, also sometimes a little depressed. His life's already so far okay, but just somehow flat, boring. He has been quite a while on a spiritual quest, but as yet has had no results. Without having to ask another question to this wolf, I know that he fits with a 99% probability into one of two categories. Either he has no pack and roams alone through the woods. Or he lives in a pack, but at the zoo. Well, or the third category, he lives alone in a cage at the zoo. Well, what should I advise in this case? What should I tell this wolf? Should he meditate or uh, on a daily basis or sing mantras or do yoga? No, he needs a species appropriate life. Maybe he needs to meditate or to do some yoga to become aware of this fact. However, without the step into a species appropriate life, nothing in this universe will be able to save him. So, for the wolf, this topic is on the one hand very simple, because it is obvious how a wolf must live so that he lives in a species-appropriate way. On the other hand, it is also very difficult, because maybe he has no way to produce the circumstances for this. For instance, if he is locked up in a cage. <laughs> well, and for humans it is... Curiously enough, exactly the reverse. A human being has on one hand the ability to bring about his species-appropriate circumstances. 
On the other hand, at least it seems so, it's not quite so easy for people to find out what needs have to be fulfilled so that one lives species appropriate. Right. So, why am I telling you all this? Well, quite simply because in our work with people, we do meet this very topic nearly every day. People are looking for so-called spiritual liberation and do not rear themselves in a species appropriate way. And if we point out the obvious, for example, yes, of course, you're lonely, you're like totally, completely isolated. <laughs> Or, of course, you're unhappy, you're completely locked up in your marriage. Then quite often we will hear a thousand reasons why no other life is possible. Or, or that this is not at all the reason for the unfulfillment. Well, what should I advise this wolf? No, this man. <laughs> should he meditate on a daily basis? Or sing mantras? Or do yoga? No, he needs a species appropriate life. Well, maybe he needs to meditate or to do some yoga to become aware of this. However, without the step into a species appropriate life, nothing in this universe, will be able to save him. Wait a second. That does sound somehow familiar now, right? <laughs> and the comparison between man and wolf fits pretty well. Both are beings who are capable of extreme cruelty and infinite tenderness. And they are both dependent on freedom and social integration. And they do have both the capacity to brilliant intelligence and atrocious stupidity. <laughs> so, how do you live? Do you live wild and socially integrated at the same time? Powerful and gently at the same time? Do you rear yourself in a species appropriate way? Or do you have a thousand reasons why this simply cannot work. Truthful sp spirituality arises only from a species-appropriate environment. Any wolf in freedom is meditating in a natural way by, if there is nothing else to do, quietly lying around. <laughs> And he sings natural mantras by howling with his pack. And he practices original yoga by stretching thoroughly before and after each activity. So simple. To recognize and produce your own species appropriate environment is it is the first and maybe most important step on the path of self-awareness. Without it, nothing goes on. And it is the most difficult of all. To live it, for example, in a seminar, is not even the most challenging part of that. It is usually done rather easily and playfully. But to preserve and implement this awareness in everyday life, well, that's a completely different story. With love, Dirk Liesenfeld <laughs>